Hey neighbors, how y'all doing out there? It's Miss C and I'm back for another verse of the day. Today we will be coming out of John chapter 11 verses 25 and 26. Pause the video, open up your Bible app, or go get you a real hard copy Bible. <laughs> you know you have a couple of them in your house somewhere, either on the bookshelf, on the table, um, on the coffee table, on in the china cabinet. I know you got one somewhere on your work desk and open it up to John chapter 11 and where we'll we will be reading verses 25 through 26 and it reads Jesus said to her I am the resurrection and the life whosoever believes in me will live even if he dies verse 26 and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die do you believe this let's go back up to 25 because i'm reading it out of the amplified and the amplified gives you other words to help break down the understanding of the scripture. So the words they added was adheres to, trust in, relies on. So now I'm going to read it with the added words. It says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whosoever believes in me adheres to trust in relies on me as savior will live even if he dies so to believe on jesus or to believe in him that means we adhere to him and his word and the commandments that was given to us we trust in him that means when we believe in somebody and you trust in them, you know without a shadow of a doubt they will come through for you. You can put your whole weight on them. All your worries, all your concerns, all the burdens that hold you and weigh you down. You can give it over to him without a second thought because you know his grace and his mercy will take care of every need you stand in need of. And you can rely on him. That's what I love about him the most. If I can't rely on nobody else on this whole entire earth, I know I can rely on my Lord and Savior to be there for me in every way I need him. I love that about him. And it says, relies on him, me, as Savior. So, do you need him to be your Savior? Do you need to be saved from anything today? Do you need to be saved from? A bad relationship a dead-end job an addiction yourself because <laughs> to tell you the truth about it sometimes we can be our own worst enemy it don't even have to be friends we need to be saved from our family or even our own enemy Within this world, it got plenty of people that's against you at times for reasons you don't even know or even understand. 
But sometimes it's not the outside world. It's this world up in here that fights against us every day. Do you need to be saved from that? If so, he's the savior for you. Verse 26. And everyone who lives and believes in him as savior will never die. So, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have an eternal love that will never, ever fail you. And what's so awesome about it, he just won't love you in this life, but he'll love you also in the one to come. So when we should, when we shall pass away, whenever our death day is, and it's time to leave, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and within the gift he calls resurrection, you will have a second life. We're living one right now. But when this one is over, and it's guaranteed to be over, I said this in the video prior, if you were born, you are guaranteed to die sooner or later. But don't fear death. You don't have to fear death. For Jesus Christ conquered death in the grave through the power of his resurrection. So he is that because he did that for you and for me and when he did that when he rose on that third day y'all know easter just passed so y'all know y'all church was putting on all kind of programs he rose again he rose again yes in him rising with all power in his hand from the death in the grave we have become new with him and we will live an eternal life after this one with him and our heavenly father and our comforter the holy spirit the one who leads us and guides us through this earth every day if we would just acknowledge him in all our ways he will direct our path so is there a heaven yes it is some people don't believe some do but the word of God said you must have faith to please God. So you must believe that there is. All of this is not just here for nothing. We're just not living for nothing. We are living this life to live again. But in this life, in our first life, we must make the right choices. And one of those choices should be calling out for a Savior to be able to help you through this life so you can accomplish what you was put here for. And the last question is, do you believe this? Do you believe that Jesus Christ came, lived, served, and gave his life? for you, for the forgiveness of your sins, so you can be made whole, so you could be made righteous, so you could have an abundant amount of peace and joy in your life, your family's life, your friend's life. Do you believe that for you? This is a personal thing. This is a one-on-one a -on -one thing with you and God. People say it's many ways to get to God. But God says, no, my child, is the only one way to get to me. And it's through my son, the one who gave his life for you. So do you believe? It's a simple yes or no. If you do, then you do. If you don't, hopefully I will continue to pray. And hopefully one day you do. But everybody 
has a free will. This is a gift and a blessing that God gave to us. You are not supposed to force anybody to do anything that they don't want to do. It has to be a decision made from the heart. But I just wonder sometimes, like, I, I remember at one point I didn't want God, but it's only because I didn't know who he truly was. I was afraid of him. I was scared of him because as a little child, you would always say, you better be good. You better be good. God is looking at you. But the one thing they didn't say with that is that, yes, God is always looking at us. But he's looking at us with love in his eyes and passion in his heart for us. So if you feel as though God is mad at you today because you haven't made the right decisions that you feel as though you should have made in your life, I just want you to know that he is a God of understanding. And he knew your motives before you did. He understands your actions. He knew you before you were even created. So there's nothing above this earth, under it, around it, through it that he does not know of and he's a seer of hearts he's the only one the world looks on the outside of a person and judge them by how they look how they carry themselves what they have what they don't have what they probably will have in the future but God sees what's most important. And that's your heart. And he know if your heart has been made pure by the blood of his son. Or if you're still lost and need to truly be loved by him. He's always there with his arms open wide. Re willing, willing and ready and able to be that savior in every situation that you may face in your life. So never fear that he will turn his back on you because he won't. And you say, Missy, how do you know that? I know because he never turned his back on me. And I have made many foolish mistakes in my life and I can admit it now. I'm not embarrassed by it. I'm not ashamed. I was living this life. But now that I know that I have a second life now because I have made Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior. I will continue to make better choices here. But the best choice I have ever made in my entire life is accepting the Lord as my Savior. Because I truly needed to be saved. Not just from the evils of this world not from the addictions of this world not from money but from myself and God was there the whole time before I made the stupid decisions during when he was calling me 
telling me, no, don't go that way. But I chose to go that way anyway. He was still there and after. <laughs> after I got myself in that dark pit and was not able to climb myself out of it, or when I kept going around a mountain over and over, going through a situation over and over again with a different person, with a different person, with a different job, with a different issue, with a different friend. It was always something. Always something going on, keeping me busy, keeping me occupied so therefore I wouldn't find my destiny. So I wouldn't do what I was called and chosen to do. Which is make the Lord available to you. This is my calling. This is what I was chosen for. But I would have never gotten here if I didn't accept him as my Lord and Savior. And I can't take the credit. I'm not even going to try. God came after me with all of his love. More love than I ever felt on this earth from my parents, siblings, family, friends, lovers. No love compares to the love of God because it's unconditional, it's never failing, it's constant, it's never ending. Is not judgmental. It's a love that can get you through anything. And that's the kind of love I needed to be able to survive. So. If the Lord should happen to ask me. Do I believe that? I would say yes. And now I'm going to ask you. Do you believe? Are you ready if you should die today? Are you sure you will wake up in the next life? Would you have another life because you made that most important decision already? Or are you still lost? Are you still in the dark? Do you still need a helping hand to come into the light? If so, he's available. Run to him. And the day you feel him knocking on the door of your heart, don't wait. Open it and believe. Thank you so much for joining me today. For the verse of the day. I truly do appreciate it. I pray that you got something out of it. If you did. Let me know down below. And I'll see you next time. Bye.